am a Dish with D. That's me. Let's have a little fun food prep today. What do you think? There's a few things I want to make, and I thought, hey, why not film it and make it even harder on myself? So I thought I would show you a few things that I'm prepping for this week. And there's a couple product demonstrations coming too. So that's always fun. So let's get started. All right, let's get started on some two ingredient dough. But first, I'd like to share with you a product. This was sent to me by a company, I don't really know their name, <laughs> company that makes these, I guess. And they wanted me to try it out and give my opinion on it. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try making two ingredient dough with it. I've never used this before, so I'm kind of interested to see how it works. So I thought I'd make two ingredient dough with you guys and we'll see how it works together. And if you're interested, and only if you're interested, they offered my followers, subscribers, 10% off. There's a code to go on Amazon to use. It's not an affiliate link. It's not an ambassador code. I get nothing from it. I just got a free whisk. But if you wanted it and you wanted to get 10% off, then that's a win for you. So we're going to make some two ingredient dough with our new, this is a Danish whisk. It's kind of got like, it's, see, there it is. It has these little circles. My girl McLean tells me it's great, so I got a lot of high hopes. And when you buy this, it also comes with a, a little mini, like a scoring bread knife if you do like sourdough breads and do patterns. So it comes with that as well. So I thought I'd show you that. Wooden handle. So it feels really good in my hand. It's a nice, got a nice grip. So we'll see. Because as we know, two ingredient dough is a little precarious, very sticky, kind of really, a lot of people don't like to use it. But McLean tells me that this works great with two ingredient dough. So I thought I would show you, since I'm going to do a couple things with this dough. Where do you see what I planned for this dough? I know, it's interesting. So let's get started. We're bringing you down and you're going to see me use my whisk. Let's go. I'm super duper excited. I hope, it, I, hope, I hope I love it because we all know we love two ingredient dough. Yeah, I got a hot mess going on here. I don't know why this is here. But I have beets to make. We're going to be making some beets in a little while. So... All right, in our large bowl, we have one cup of all-purpose flour. Now you could use self-rising. I choose the all-purpose, it's just what I always have on hand. So to that, I'm going to add, we'll do this first, one half teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. Give it a mix. Now this is my version of two ingredient dough. It's more like four ingredient dough. But you know, you play around with this dough enough, you get what you like out of it, and then you can make it your own, or you could just do the standard method, which is just self-rising flour and yogurt, equal amounts. But I don't do it that way, and you're gonna see what I'm doing. Okay, next we're gonna throw in a teaspoon of yeast. Now you don't have to use this as well, but I like how it lightens it up a little bit, but that's what I choose to do. Let's get stuck here. Get out of there, get into the pool. All right, give that a mix. Give it all incorporated. So here is my half a cup, you heard me, half a cup of non-fat Greek yogurt. Now, you'll see why I only use a half a cup. You say, D, you're supposed to use a cup. Yeah. You'll see in a minute. Get it all out. Sorry about that, Get it all in there. And I use the incredible edible egg. I love how the egg lightens this dough again and just gives it a, I don't know what the word I'm gonna use, scrumptiousness about it. It's just, I adore an egg in my dough. So let's see how this goes. This, we're gonna combine it all together. Now, I don't need my two ingredient dough on the board. I kind of need it in the bowl. So I don't really need any extra flour. Okay. Flour off the bottom. Too bad here, are we? Mm. 
See, we got a nice little ball of dough. Get all that goodness out of there. This is where I usually go in with my hand anyway, because I just like the way it feels. And when you work with, you know, these kinds of doughs, you'll know the feel you're looking for. So that worked out pretty good. I don't really play with it that much. I let it come together and I let it rest. We're actually gonna need a little bit more flour. I think another tablespoon will be perfect for this. So I'm gonna grab a tablespoon of flour. I'm gonna find my flour wet. I'll be right back. All right, that is a little bit more flour. Sometimes you do, and it's okay. And remember, look at all the flour that's stuck to my bowl. So don't ever think, oh my goodness, I just added, but no, you didn't. Because you gotta remember that flour that's stuck on the bowl. So there, oh, it's a beautiful dough. Look at that. There we go, got it nice and rolled. Now I'm going to just fold it over, and get into a bowl, and I'm gonna let it rest for about, well, I'd say about at least a half an hour. I'm gonna cover it and put it in like the microwave. We'll let it rest because it's dough, dough and flour and all that stuff in yeast. It needs to rest. It needs to grow and needs to expand. So you want to give it some time. So there it is. I'm going to let it sit. We're going to come back and we're going to do some fun things with this. Ooh, what do you see what Dee does with this? You might be duly impressed. Heck, I might be duly impressed. <laughs> okay, I have an apple, just one apple I chopped up. I sauteed with a little monk fruit and a little cinnamon and about a tablespoon of water. This is going to be the filling that's going to go in our dough. It's just a simple little apple filling. It's nothing too complicated. Apple, monk fruit, cinnamon, a bit of water. Cook it down, let it cool, and they will, I will show you what I'm going to do with this. All right, the apples have been cooking for about 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and they are cooked down perfectly. I did throw a splash of skinny syrup maple, because why not? Just a splash. These are like... Candy. And guess what? Zero points. Win win. Now let's see. We're going to let these cool and then we're going to stuff them into some dough. All right, our dough is rested for about an hour. I was a little bit busy. So we're going to, you can see how it changed a little bit. That's from the yeast. So I put a little flour on my, I'm going to roll it on this like uh, cutting board just so it won't stick. And we're going to pull it out. A little bit more flour. Remember, a little bit of flour is not going to hurt you. You didn't get fat from an extra table teaspoon of flour. So don't sit there and go, oh my God, he added more flour. Yeah. Just pat it down. And that's all I'm going to do to this dough. We're going to divide it into four for four portions. I mean, you could weigh it. You know, I don't got time for that. You know I don't have time for that. So you're gonna be as equal as best you can. What you skimp on one day, you make up for in another. So it'll all work out. You just pull them out. Okay. And we're gonna take this one and cut it in half again. We're gonna do a top, and as this is three points of dough, we're gonna do a top and a bottom for our little apple thing. So we're gonna grab this. We're just going to, like I said, we're just going to press it out. It doesn't have to be, I got my little rolling pin. Just roll it out a little bit. This is very easy. It's a very fine dough. I do have my little dash waffle maker heating up. So it's ready for me when I am ready for it. So I'm just going kind to of push it. We're just making a bottom and a top for our little it's going to be a little apple waffle pie. That should be good enough. OK. 
okay? Simple as pie. Ha! Huh. All right, let me go grab the dash, bring it over here, and we're gonna fill it, and we're gonna waffleize it. So, be right back with my dash. Okay, in the TikTok video, it used biscuits, like grand biscuits, but there are way too many points. And I don't have any of the small ones, so that's why I'm doing the two ingredient dough. I had to refigure them because they were too big. So I just had to bunch them together and re-roll it. So, so it'll fit in the dash. So we're gonna spray it with some nonstick spray. And we're gonna put one of our little pieces of dough. We'll just pat it in there. And we're gonna put a little of the apple filling that we just previously made. A few, well, it's been a few hours now. Just put it in there, spread it so it all gets as flat as you can, spread. A little bit more over here. There we go. Okay, oh, there's no right or wrong way to do this, I'm sure. And we're just gonna flatten out our dough. And we're gonna put it right on top. And just kind of make sure the edges, and we're gonna crunch it down. I hope this works because it looked really good and it would be only three points. And you know me, I'm a cheapskate when it comes to points. But for this, if it comes out right with some caramel syrup on top or some pancake syrup on top, little ready whip, scoop of ice cream. So I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna push down a little bit. I should, I should keep the video running so we know how long it takes. I mean, everyone's going to have to judge for themselves because, you know, every little iron is probably a little a minute or two different. And I'm thinking with this next one, maybe I'll get the little dash pie maker and maybe we can make an apple pie. I don't know. What do you think? So many decisions, so many pies, so many dashes, so little time. So let's just have a look at it because it's already puffing. <gasps> look at that. Oh, it's not done yet, but yeah, I'm going to like hold it down so it gets that nice crust and the dough cooks all the way through because you don't want any raw dough in the middle. That's why I try to get it as thin as possible. But again, the time on this is going to vary to the size of your dough, the size of your apples how hot your iron is. So if you ask me how long, I would say probably at least three to four minutes, give or take. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back when this is done. All right, it's been about four minutes. So there you have an apple stuffed waffle. Let's cut it open. Oh, look at Look how fantastic. It's all cooked through. Shall we taste it? Because, you know, take a piece. I don't want all of it. But, you know, you know your girl's got to have some. Mmm. -hmm. You could probably prep these ahead for breakfast. Stuffed apple you could do probably with any fruit and pears would be good in here I'm not sure about bananas they might be too mushy strawberries possibly maybe berries not sure I'm not a huge berry fan but this is fantastic mmm I love the contrast of the nice soft fruit and the crunchy waffle be a great dessert powdered sugar on this I'm in Let me go finish this. I decided to make another one. Heck with the pie maker. You know what it reminds me of? I was thinking as I'm eating it. Funnel cake. Oddly enough. It does. This could be the new WW funnel cake. Could it be the egg? Could it be the yeast in this? Reminds me of funnel cake. Of course, there's not apple in funnel cake, but 
Mm. Those apples, and they told, they told, again, you don't need a recipe. You just, that was one apple diced, sauteed with some Pam spray, some monk fruit, a little bit of water, maybe a tablespoon, some cinnamon towards the end, and then a splash of skinny syrups. You don't even have to use that. You don't, you can leave it out, but I had it, so I used it. Pancake syrup you could throw in there. It's delicious. That's why I made another one. Because that's what you do. You find something you like, you make multiples. So I had four parts of the dough, so I have two more. I was going to make bagels. I need bagels for this week. <sighs> yeah, so I will make two bagels. I'm going to do the bagels, and I'm going to do the beets. And I'm going to bring you along to show you how I... Now, I've seen, you've seen it before, but since we're prepping today, you might as well watch me peel my beets. Because it's so interesting, isn't it? Watching DVs peel beets. It's good stuff, though. Let's prep our beets. You know, I love... I get these at the produce outlet. These were like $2. Look at these huge beets. So some people are from the school of thought to peel them after. It just, I guess it all depends on what you like to do. I preferably like to peel them before. So what I do is I cut the ends off. Give them a rinse and then we're going to peel them. And I will come back and show you me peeling them. All right, we have our cleaned and peeled beets. What I'm going to do is give each one a piece of foil, lay it in the middle, drizzle just about a teaspoon of olive oil, not even that, and just wrap it up. Oops. Yeah. These will roast in the 400 degree oven for about, let's say about an hour. You'll, I like to stick my um, sharp knife in there to make sure they're tender. So that's all I do. I threw these, I keep them in the foil, throw them in the refrigerator for about, oh my God, oh, seven to 10 days if they last that long, because I really like them. <laughs> so that is it for my beets. So my beets are prepped. And what are we gonna do now? I don't know what I'm gonna do next. So this is prepping on the fly. While we have a minute between preps, I wanted to show you these. These are pot holders and oven mitts. The company that sent me that nice cool dough, Danish dough whisk, sent me these to give my two cents about and give them a try. I really like them. I actually like, sometimes I'm funny with pot holders because they might look nice, but if they're gonna get your hands hot, they're not good. And these were really, I was able to hold my pan out of the oven and didn't burn because I have a couple that do that. They're cute, they match the kitchen decor, but they just get my hand hot. But I thought this inside was really nice. It's cotton, so these would wash up beautifully. They're pretty. And what I liked about these, it has a pocket. Yeah, a pocket, because sometimes you just need a pocket. So I love that. Because sometimes it's, you know, you just want something small or sometimes you want something big. So. Girl loves a good pocket. So they're also giving, this is the brand. They're also giving you 10% off these as well. I have a link for these. Again, not ambassador, not affiliate, just 10% off on Amazon if you like it. If you're neat, I was a need of, actually, when they asked me, I'm like, ooh, because I have some old pot holders that just are kind of like, I have to double up because they're just old. Time to hit the road and time for some new And These colors went with my decor, so I was extremely excited. So I really like these. I've been using them all morning for my prep and I am giving them two thumbs up. So if you get, if you're in need of pot holders, go check them out. The link's in the description box. And if I remember to put the code here, I'll do that. Be nice and nice, I forget. You love me anyway. All right, what are we doing next, Dee? I'll let you know. All right, so have since the oven's on, I might as well make my favorite little Cream of wheat bread. Do it a little bit differently because I don't have a banana that's ready to be used. So a lot of people ask me all the time, do you have to use a banana? And I'm here to tell you, no, you do not. So I do have my egg, I'm beaten up. 
and I will use some unsweetened applesauce. We're going to use a third of a cup. So yeah, that is your swap out for your banana. going to put a little maple extract extract of your choice I'm feeling maple today just a little dab will do me and I'm also going to put in <clears throat> some of this I don't have any uh, sugar-free pancake syrup on hand so I'm going to use this birch benders mung fruit sweetened pancake syrup maple bourbon two tablespoons is zero points so it's not going to matter point wise we're gonna throw two tablespoons in. I mean, it just gives it more of an in-depth flavor, quite honestly, I just like it. And we're gonna put in some monk fruit sweetener. You can do the brown, you can do the white, whatever floats your boat. We're going to do about, hmm, <laughs> looks like a tablespoon and a half. Well, this is only a little mini loaf. And it's not a big cake. All right, so all that is in here. Let's give that a nice whoosh, 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 as I like to say. All right, let's get some other stuff. Salt. Baking powder. All the written is in my recipe blog, dishwithd.blogspot.com. And some of the star cream of wheat. Four tablespoons. And what I need. Let's grab this one tablespoon. I should put that in first. All right. One. Two. Three. And four. I use the whole grain cream of wheat. You can use any one you get, honestly. This is the one I happen to have. All right, let's get this all a mix. We have our egg, which I have everything. All right, this is a great, great breakfast. Four points, and it is satisfying, delicious, and quite yummy. I don't even know how I came up with this. This was one of those things, I just wanted a cute little bread and just had some cream of wheat laying around and said, hey, maybe we can make a bread out of that. There we go. It came together in Quickly, let's grab our little loaf pan. Let me grab my spray. All right, spray it. Pour it in. The lilies. Yes, indeed. The lilies. Now, if you wanted to put some cinnamon, you could. I'm just not feeling it right now. But, you know, I'm going to put some flavor. Maybe I'll put some cinnamon on top. I don't really feel like it's all fluid. All right. Let me see. Two, four, six, eight. One more. And one for the cook. That's how I roll. Sprinkle some cinnamon on top. Eh, you know what? I feel like doing. Let's go a little bit crazy. So a little crystally monk fruit top. Maybe this will get nice and crusty. Is that gonna cost us anything? Eh, why not? You know, live a little. All right, let's go bake this bad boy. So another breakfast ready to go for the week. All right, there's my apple stuffed waffle, some two ingredient, two ingredient dough bagel buns. Oh, that loaf, 
Oh, cream of wheat loaf. Oh my goodness, four points, so delicious. And my roasted beets. Everything here is ready to wrap, cooling, and ready to go for this week's snacks and breakfast. So that's it. A quick little meal prep, just to get you a few little ideas for the week. Like I said, it's not meal prepping. It's a few food items that I have ready for me during the week, so I don't have to fuss. No muss, no fuss. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hey, if nothing else, you need to try those apple waffle thingies. It's very good. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. It's generally upload and when I go live, because who doesn't want to know that? And if you think anybody would like to see my meal prep, then share it by all means. You have my permission. Have a great rest of the week, weekend, or whenever you get to see this. Ta-ta, folks. We will dish another day.